All right, everybody, so um, I'm going to do something now that I've never done before. I think there's the camera over there. I'm gonna do something I haven't done before. I've done things similar, but I've never actually done this process of throwing and using coils. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos on how to do this, and I'm gonna give it the best shot I can, and I'm gonna succeed, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna make this thing happen, and it uh, should be kind of interesting. All right. So let's see, that should work. I want to center myself a little better. All right, so I'm going to throw the largest thing I've ever thrown before. Um, however, I'm not capable of throwing that much clay. I imagine this is gonna be somewhere around 80 to 100 pounds of clay, which is a lot of clay. Um, I'm going to do so using a method called throwing and coiling. So I'm going to start out by throwing, which is this process working at a potter's wheel. Uh, and I'm going to throw kind of a large shape uh, with uh, more clay than I, than I usually throw with. I think I've only thrown this much clay at one time once in my life. Uh, and I'm going to throw it, kind of try to get a shape about like that. I'm going to throw, I'm going to, in the end, I'm going to try to throw a vase. It's about 30 inches wide, 30 inches tall. And the reason for that is that's the largest vase that'll fit into the kiln at Washington High School. So I'm trying to, I'm not going to try to max out at the full 30 by 30, but I am going to try to get to at least like 28 by 28 because I don't want to accidentally get too big and then have it not fit in the kiln. And I'm not, I don't need to go 30 by 30. So I'm gonna go with like 28 by 28. I'm gonna definitely make sure that it's gonna fit in the kiln. Um, now, I'm gonna start by throwing 30 pounds of clay, which is more than I can uh, center on a ball, on a wheel at one time. So the nice thing is uh, the students that are watching this from my art class during this uh, shelter in place, should have a general idea of what I'm doing here because you've already watched uh, four episodes of the great pottery throwdown, so you've got a general idea of what I'm talking about. But I'm going to center this, which should be about 10 pounds, and then I'm gonna add another 10 pounds, I'm gonna add another 10 pounds, and in the process, I should end up with 30 pounds of clay centered on the wheel, and then I'm gonna pull that as large as I can get it without going too thin, because I need, I need it to stay fairly thick. This first uh, section needs to be pretty fat because it's gonna support a lot of clay on top of that. Now I'm gonna fast forward through a lot of this video so you're not gonna have to watch the whole thing or you'll be able to see it but in slow motion and I'll be putting together a bunch of little smaller videos so I'm not just gonna keep the thing running. This should take me all day or several hours. I'm gonna be collecting slip throughout this whole centering process because I'm likely to lose a lot of clay. I usually do anyways. But this slip I'm gonna be using later on in the process. A lot of what I'm going to do in the beginning here requires me to, uh, I need to be really careful in the beginning. I need a nice, big, solid, very centered base to start with.
Now this process that I'm going to be doing, which involves throwing a form and then adding to it with coils, is a perfect example of why you learn lots of different techniques when you're learning how to work with ceramics. You don't just focus on learning to throw, you, you know how to coil build, you know how to pinch, make pinch pots, you know how to slab build, because in the end you want to be able to take those different techniques and combine them together. So I'm going to be using my skills at throwing and then combining those with skills coil building and kind of working together. Okay, so for the next few minutes, I'm going to wet it down. I'm going to let it sit for five minutes. I'm going to scrape off the clay and then get it wet. And then I'm going to keep doing that for a little while. So I'm going to end this video for a bit because I want to collect a lot of this and I want it to be really, really very wet. And I want to make sure I have plenty of it. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here. If I can somehow turn off my phone without getting it too dirty. I'm going to clean off my knuckle and say goodbye for a bit. All right, so I have quite a bit of this uh, muddy down slip. And we're going to do this, I was about to say try to do this monster, but I'm not going to try. I'm just going to make it happen. Show you, and I am not afraid of this clay. my bottom to be really thick, which means I need a needle tool. Be back in a second. I need to find out how thick my bottom is. Right now it's, oh, it's really thick. Right now it's about an inch thick. It's a little thicker than I want. I'm going to go with more like about three quarters of an inch thick. Still feel like it's about an inch down here, which is probably good. If we move up here, we're probably closer to three quarters of an inch. Really curious about how wide this thing is at the moment. I have a tape measure out here somewhere. All right, so this is I'm shooting for 28 and this thing is only 16 at the moment. This is maybe why I should have kept it a little thicker because as, as it comes out here wider, it's gonna want a slump. So perhaps I should have stuck with my original theory about keeping it pretty thin or thick. However, I am going to bring this out anyways. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to come out to 28 inches. I'm not because for two reasons. One, I don't need to come out to 28 inches. I mean, sure, I could push myself to the maximum, but the reality is I should work with what I've got at any given point, be willing to change my, change my goals and move, and move to a different, uh, do things a little bit differently. I think that if I push this thing, if I try to make this thing wider than, than it's, then it will work at this point, then I am going to, or change the shape to something that's not really ideal for its weight, then I'm potentially going to end up failing. And I'd rather have success at creating a really big, interesting looking vase than failure at, at trying to do something like trying to hit an exact measurement or something. I'm going to thicken up this lip here. 
because I'm going to be adding clay to the top of this. I'm going to I'm going to make sure that this is really very centered. And that's actually probably the most important thing about this is that this lip, it doesn't actually, it's not ridiculously important if the bottom of this is perfectly centered. If you see a slight little variance on the on, on moving around on the bottom, that's not really that big of a deal. I mean, it should be close to center. However, the lip needs to be very centered because that's where I'm going to be building off. If I allow my lip to be slightly off center, then the next time I add on clay to it, it's going to be just that much more off center and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So I'm going to try to, to get the whole thing as centered as I can. And I'm going to make sure that the lip is really very, very centered. This is where I'm trying to sit very carefully still and make sure that my lip is nice and centered. I need to make sure that my lip is pretty wide because I'm going to be adding a, a coil of, of clay on top of that. And so I need to have a significant width on that for right now. interesting note this is definitely the largest bowl I've ever thrown trying to decide about this shape I really kind of want to make it a little wider but I'm afraid if I make it wider then I'm gonna make the lip too thin because it, as I get wider the lip thins out and that would uh, definitely be a problem take a moment to stand back and take a look at my pot which you've been doing this whole time but from this perspective it looks a lot different than from your perspective I wish I could see my camera but I'm gonna step back and take a look at my pot and I'm gonna try to picture what it's gonna look like as it goes up and around I think I'm gonna come I think I'm gonna come basically almost up almost up straight for a little bit before I start coming in I'm gonna come into about here in the end, I want to come up. The whole thing can't be taller than this. And I want to put a lip, a, a flange on the top. So really, I think the, the main belly of it's going to be about yay big. And then I'm going to put a, a lip on the top. Okay. All right. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to, I need to make this thing. I need to dry it out. Um, and at home, if you are in this position and you are trying to to solidify this part of the project before you start adding on to it, you could easily use a hair dryer. I'm going to use something a little more interesting. Let's see whether it's, it's it's only slightly stiffer at this point however I've got something else to do right now so I'm going to do that for a bit and while I'm doing that this is also going to dry just being in the in the breeze It'd be nicer if I was in the Sun but just being outside in the breeze is going to cause it stiffen up and then when I come back later I'll, I'll hit it with a blowtorch more if I need to I need to make sure that this is just solid and just staying put and not moving around on me at all while I start to build up and at this point it's still pretty yeah, it's still pretty soft. So I'm gonna come at it again later after. Yes, it was fun working with a blowtorch, but sometimes the answer, as my wife will tell me, is to be more patient. So I have come up with this other solution. 
I have a fan blowing at this, and this is a really pretty powerful fan. Uh, so it's blowing a lot of uh, wind at this pot. You'll notice that the pot is also spinning so that it's not going to dry on one side. And I'm just going to leave it here for a little while. I'm going to go watch a show and come back and check on it every once in a while and wait for it to get nice and stiff. <clears throat> so now my pot has been spinning and the fan's been blowing on it and it's definitely stiff. Okay. I'm now going to, going to score up this edge. Now, the video I saw of the guy making a pot like this, he, um, he was using a, uh, a scoring rib, which was like a metal, uh, a metal square rib that had a rough edge on it, and he was able to do that nicely. And I know I own one of these, I just think it's at the school right now, so I'm going to have to use a tool from home, which is something you guys are going to have to do if you're one of my students, because you're, uh, you've only got what you've got around, and sometimes you've got to get creative and figure out what you're going to use. So I'm using a fork. When I was in college in a ceramics class, my ceramics teacher told me that my most important tool I had in my bucket would be my fork. And actually this works just as well as the uh, the tool that the guy was using online. As you can see, I've really scratched up that edge pretty well. Hopefully you can see that. I will uh, zoom in on that real quick. Oh, let's hope I don't drop this camera. Let's zoom, let's lean this thing forward. Well, you can kind of see that edge. And then I'm gonna tip that thing back without breaking my phone. And there we go. So I've scratched up that edge really severely. Not carefully, but severely. I went to my wife's art supply to look for a chip brush, which is just like a cheap paintbrush. Couldn't find one. Well, I found one, but I decided I'd better not use it because it's my wife's. So I looked in the kitchen and I found this thing. This is a, uh, I'm not even sure what it is. Um, it, was in my, it was in my catch all drawer and it was, it was, um, I think it might be for marinating or for putting up butter or sauce on meat while it's in the oven. I'm not sure what it's for. But one way or the other, I'm going to use it to take some of this slip from over here and transfer it to the edge of my pot. Okay. Now this is crucial. When you have, uh, when you're working on ceramics, if you have a, an edge or a piece of ceramics that you're working on and it is, I gotta grab a towel. A piece of ceramics that is dried out a little bit. It's, uh, this is definitely dry. The stuff I'm about to put on there is definitely soft. This has definitely shrunk slightly. The stuff I'm about to add has not. You really wanna make sure that you do what's called scoring and slipping, which is to really rough up this edge here. So the piece of, the, the edge, that the, the clay that I'm about to add there, if this thing does crack in the kiln, that's where it's gonna crack. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of my coils from over there, and I'm going to scratch up that edge as well. Can't really see it, I'm sure, because it's behind my pot here, but I'll show it to you in a moment. But I have roughed that up significantly. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put that right on top of this edge with that score line down. I'm going to press this into this edge here I'm gonna rotate that so you can kind of see it better if I can get that into the light, perhaps. I'm kind of smashing that edge down into the clay there. And I'm gonna press that thing down a little bit. Now notice that if, my, if I had not, if I had not um, let this thing stiffen up by pushing down on this edge, it would have definitely been destroyed. I mean, it would have, I would have been, it would have been misshapen. So now I'm gonna press that down there. I'm gonna grab another coil. But I noticed some sort of air bubble in this. I think there might have been an air bubble. If so, I want to keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. I'm going to scratch up this surface really well. I 
I'm going to mash that end there and put that on top of this right here, this right here. I'm gonna take a little bit of slip right there, put it on that. And I'm gonna mash those things together right there. And then I'm gonna continue on my way around this pot. Once again, putting that rough edge down. I really wish this was a little bit longer than it is because I'm going to have to create a little chunk here in the middle. Have a little bit off of this. Scratch it up. Scratch up that edge there. Scratch up this edge here. Kind of mash these two things. I'm going to try to make it fit the right shape here. Scratch it up, get this wet, slime that over with some slip, and I'm going to press this thing down here. Next time around, I'm going to make sure that I have enough to make it all the way around. Pat that thing down. Once again, if I had not let my um, if I had not let my pot stiffen up significantly, I would have had problems with this because just putting this pressure on this thing, it would have made the whole thing kind of want to sag, and I really needed it to hold its shape. Okay. Now I forgot to do something. I want these to kind of, I want to put these coils in so they go slightly inward. So I'm going to take a moment to kind of press this. I intended to put three coils on before I did any of this, but I'm being a little more paranoid. The guy in the video did three coils and then did this work, but I'm being a little bit more paranoid. I want to make sure I actually heard a little bit of a pop there, which told me there was like a little air bubble I got rid of. I do not want to create any air bubbles between this layer. Now I've been watching people do this for, or I've been aware of people doing this. I've never actually watched anybody make one of these things. It's weird actually, but I have never done this before. I have never put a coil on top of something that I've thrown before. So for those of you out there thinking, but I've never done clay, this is completely new to me. I get it. And that is definitely something to be considered, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that it's not something you're familiar with. And I'm obviously not expecting you to be building big old giant pots like this. Just want you to be brave enough to give it a shot. really wanting to make sure because this first thing here is if this thing were to crack it's much more likely to be on this first layer than the next layer I'm gonna add I'm gonna add another as soon as I get these things really well attached I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, add a couple more layers and then I'm gonna do a little throwing All right, I seem to have gotten rid of that, that oddness on the outside in that last cut. I'm not sure how much taller I've gotten at this point from what I had it last time. But I do know that I'm gonna leave it for right now. I think I've gained a couple inches there. 
It's not as much as I had hoped to gain. But you know what? That's the first time I've ever done that. All right, so I'm gonna put this thing back on low. A slow spin. And turn the fan on. And let it dry for a little bit longer. All right, at this point, I'm gonna remove this. I need this, this lip to be strong. That's why I was blow torching it, because I need this to be strong enough to hold, to support the thing I'm gonna put on top of it without falling in. So I'm gonna take this thing off and I'm gonna throw the other form for this thing to attach. And I'm gonna dry it similarly. And then I'm going to attach these two things. All right, so I have now thrown a form for the top of it. Let me go grab that real quick. So as you can see, it's hollow in the middle. It goes all the way to the bottom. It's kind of that shape right there. And it is intended to fit like this. I think I'm gonna be able to make that work. I hope so. On a positive note, if I do uh, screw this up, most of the vase is really pretty dry. So I don't think it's going to actually come apart. Worst case scenario, I'll have to cut off the top and redo it from a certain point up. Right now I'm scratching up this edge really well. I'm hoping that I don't drop it. being really timid. I'm going to step away from it for a bit. I'm going to take a few minutes to think about it. I'm going to look at it, think about what I might want to do to change the shape. If I want to change the shape, I might uh, do some embellishments and then I'll uh, take one last video of uh, what it looks like in the end. All right, so I'm going to make handles for the pot. I'm using Adobe Illustrator. 
and I have created that design. That's kind of the silhouette of the handles that I'm gonna make. I've exported this and made an SVG file. And now I'm gonna upload this. And that's a handle shape. That's not what I'm looking for. Delete. Let's go back to this file. Save as. It's handle shape SVG is what I'm looking for. So I had the wrong one there. Let's try that again. Home. Upload. Handle shape SVG. That's that one there. these things. One there. Copy and paste. One there. Grab those. Copy and paste. And now I'm going to select material which is I'm using the medium, medium maple plywood, and I'm going to click print, and over here, uh, laser cutter that I bought a few years ago, and we're going to wait for it to get ready to print. Oh, there's my button. So what I'm cutting out of here is going to be, uh, there are going to be four of them, I'm only going to video the one of them, but it's basically cutting out something that I'm going to use in the extruder tomorrow to pull out my, to make my handles. Let me cut another one down. Okay, so you can see I've got four sheets of the stuff that I lasered last night, and that's the shape that I'm currently working on as a handle. I've got my clay and my extruder. This is the extruder die that I had from yesterday when I was rolling, cutting out those, those uh, coils. Actually, you know what? I think I want it to go out in this direction. That really shouldn't make much of a difference. I really wish I had like some sort of rubber grommet for this because it's going to squirt out the sides, and I wish there was a way for me to avoid that. But it'll still work. We don't need two, I'm just going to do the one.
pretty cool looking handle right there, I'd say. Okay, I'm going to end the video. Okay, so I had this pot covered entirely last night so that it would try to even out a little bit. I was worried because I had torched the top and torched this area and torched here, but not torched it. It was potentially uneven in terms of how dry it was. So I covered the entire thing in a plastic bag and left it sitting out last night. And the reality is after I do what I'm going to do today, I'm gonna to cover it up again and probably let it sit quite a while so that it kind of evens out and becomes evenly dry. And then when I do dry it, I'm probably gonna put it inside where it's gonna dry slower. Um, but today I've got only a few minutes to make this video. So I'm making the handle. And at this point I've already posted that image where I made the handle or I've, I've included the, the portion where I made this handle here, here. Okay. But <clears throat> right now I'm kind of focusing on this kind of thing. This is a mug that I've made in the past where I've taken an extruded handle. I've just stuck it on there and squished it in place. And you can see that it's even all the way along and it's attached to the bottom and that's a really pretty simplistic looking handle. And I'm wanting to do something a little bit more interesting. You'll see this handle, which I didn't make. It's a little thicker right here and it's a pulled handle. It was attached and then pulled and then attached so that it gets more slender and I kind of like that. So follow this way. You'll see what I've done here with this handle here. I've taken that extruded handle I have first of all mashed the end of this so that it will fit on the pot well and, that, and that'll make sense later on. And I'm gonna do the same thing with another one in a moment. And then I took it inside and I did this thing called a pulling process. And right now I'm letting it kind of dry out out here because I need it to stiffen up a little bit. So now I'm gonna do that process with this one right here. I'm gonna start out by taking this. This is already drying out. I shouldn't have left it sitting out here. And I'm going to start out by pushing and mashing that front end. Keep in mind that I'm not going to be asking you guys to be doing any of this. I'm just trying to show you the process by which I do mine. And you'll be doing your own processes. I'm kind of fattening up that end right there. I'm putting a really pretty severe angle on this, which will be necessary later on. Trying to make sure this kind of looks nice here. Okay, now I'm gonna take this inside the house. I'll get out of the way of the video, Sven. Coming through. I'm gonna go right there. I'm gonna take off this bottom here. And I'm gonna do something called pulling the handle. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna get the whole thing wet. And I'm gonna kind of run this through my hands the process that, that ceramic artists use to make handles. Typically they'll attach the handle to the pot. And for those of you, you guys have seen this on uh, the Great Pottery Throwdown if you've done that assignment. My goal is I want it to be thinner and thinner and thinner as it goes down. Primarily because I just want this to have kind of an elegant look to it. I want it to look like I pulled the handle. Now, because I'm adding this much water to this thing, it's gonna get kind of sloppy, and I need it to be stronger than this. So I'm actually gonna lay this thing out in the sun and let it stiffen up a little bit before I attach it to the pot. Okay, I'm going to go lay this down next to the one outside and then I'm going to make them the same length and let them stiffen up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to attach these handles. I've let these handles sit outside and dry a little bit, which makes them so they're not quite as floppy. I'm going to score that. I intentionally left this a little softer than the rest of it down here. I've drawn, I turned on the wheel and I put a very subtle line right there so that I can scratch this up really well right here.
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the other half off of the camera. And then I'll take a video, the final video of the whole thing once the whole thing is kind of done. That's one handle, okay? There you go. All right, so bad news is when I tried to attach my other handle, it broke. But I know why it broke. I made one handle and had it sitting out on this uh, on, over here, and I showed it to you before I made the second handle. That handle had been sitting out here for 10 or 15 minutes. I then went and asked my wife to make a video, and that took a little while. So by the time I actually got around to pulling the second handle, it had been 20, 25, 30 minutes. And I put them both out to dry, and then I attached them both. So one handle was much drier than the other. So when I tried to put them on, only one handle bent, the other one had already dried out too much, and so it cracked. So the way that I chose to resolve this issue is that. I left just the one handle on and decided to make a pour spout in the front so that the whole thing is more of a pitcher, a big kind of pitcher form instead of a two-handled vase form, which actually I like better. At this point, you can see I've cleaned up the, uh, the underneath the handle here. I've also put some extra clay up in here to kind of attach this to the top to give it some extra strength. You can see I've also finalized this shape down here and kind of cleaned it up really well. At this point, I'm using a, a trash bag I'm putting over the whole form to keep it damp so that it dries just really slowly because I'm still very worried that it's going to crack as it dries, especially that handle. If I leave that just out for the wind to blow through that handle right there, it's gonna dry out that handle long before the rest of it dries out. So I have to dry this thing really slowly. Anyways, that's the end of my vase. I hope you like it.